All right, thanks for coming back to the show. Uh, if you have any questions, please give us a call at 613-728-1001. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and I believe actually we have a caller on the line, uh, Diane. Yes. Hi, Diane. Go ahead with your question. Uh, I have a question for them about making money in real estate investments. Um, I have an income property, and I can deduct uh, like heat and hydro and my taxes, things like that. But if I don't do any major repairs or anything, the rest of the income for the year becomes income on my personal income. And so I'm paying an awful lot of taxes, and I'm just wondering how you figure this with the taxes you pay every year and, and the capital gains tax that you have to pay when you sell the property. Well, are you, uh, so obviously you're quite cash flow positive, correct? Cash flow positive meaning what? Well, meaning, you know, if you're, if you're all your expenses and mortgages and all that uh, come out to uh, 1200, you're getting 1500 in rent. So are you telling me you're, you're cash flow positive with your rent? Yes. yes. Okay. okay, so there are ways that you can you know, make it so if you don't need that cash, a lot of people are either looking for a cash investment um, or they're looking for an equity investment, but you can reinvest that cash flow back into the mortgage. So if you wanted to, um, uh, you know, pay down, I don't recommend it, but if you wanted to pay down the mortgage a little bit quicker, put that towards the mortgage, you could do that as well. Uh, now we talk about capital gains. You don't pay capital gains until you sell that property. Right. So when you do sell that property, you obviously will pay capital gains, but there's no there's no way around you know paying capital gains. Yeah. I, I guess if you're paying yeah. a lot of money in capital gains, it means you made a lot of money in your investment. Uh, but if you don't need that cash flow, uh, you know, listen, you can you can increase that mortgage, you can put toward that money towards other things. Um, that it, or you know what the best thing to do is take that money and pay off your principal residence. Yeah. Like you're paying off your principal residence is your number one game, not, not paying down your investments. Um, and I mean, if you don't need the money, you can obviously be a little more aggressive paying down your investments. But my recommendation is to take that money and pay off your principal residence because yeah. the tenants, the tenants will pay down uh, your mortgage on your investment property. Right. So, uh, whereas, you know, you you can, that's, that becomes a write off. Whereas your principal residence is never going to be a write off. No. Okay. All right, I hope I helped there. Yes, okay, thank you. Right, thanks for your call, Diane. Okay. There are, there, there are, it's a good question because yeah. there are a lot of, there's, there's so many different investment types. And mm -hmm. when I say that, uh, the one thing we do is we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk to you about what's your strategy? Do you need cash flow? Uh, you know, are you sort of in your retirement years and yeah. cash flow is very, very important to you? Well, we're gonna find an area that's very cash flow positive, uh, that your, your mortgages might be, you know, a little bit lower because prices are lower, but you're still getting those high rents, which is gonna bring in that cash flow. Or is it somewhere you just want to see something build an equity? I mean, I'm talking yeah. about, you know, the Golden Triangle, the Glebe, downtown area, where they're a little bit higher priced, therefore your mortgage is going to be more, your rent's going to be, you know, equal to that, and therefore you're just cash flow neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, you know, a lot of people who are looking for that, and, you know, it should be a combination of both. But if you do have that extra cash flow, the best thing to do would be pay down your principal residence with yeah. it. I mean, I think that's what, uh, that's a good point. I mean, it's <clears throat> to sit down with a professional such as yourself uh, and come up with a complete strategy. I mean, it separates professionals from the cowboys, right? Cowboys is going to say, give me your money, I'll oh, invest it, don't worry about it. <laughs> professionals going to sit down and, and um, you know, look at your whole strategy, look at your situation, where you want to go. And, you know, it's going to be with you to get there, you know? Well, the, the, the nicest thing is uh, this is my passion. So yeah. it's easy for me. I involve, I do residential real estate, and I do investment real estate. It could be something as small as a terrace home, a town home, uh, all the way up to, you know, a four, five, six, eight, ten unit. Yeah. Uh, and it all depends on what your risk level is. Um, but it's something that we have, we love doing. My whole team invests in real estate. We love doing it, so it's very easy. Yeah. And I always say to people, if I find something that I would buy, you should buy it, yeah. right? Because I'm in the game, I'm doing it. Exactly. Uh, we have a 125 person investor network that we pass all these deals on to those investors. Right. One, because we believe that it's a way to build wealth. Yeah. Of course. No, exactly. Um, in terms of syndicate mortgages, when you have a client that comes in, comes to you and says, hey, you know, I have 25,000, I want to invest. What, what kind of steps do they, do they go through with that? Um, what we actually do is we actually, like every single, you have to know your client. Yeah. Bottom line is, know your client. Paul does the exact same thing. So when he says he has to look at where you currently are, 
that's the bottom line of everything. Yeah. Because when I take someone who has 25,000 or I take someone who has 2 million, we still talk about the same thing, right? Yeah. It's just a different dollar amount. So when I have someone, like I always make the, like I always talk about one investor who has, she was 65 years old, she invested $25,000 in our project in St. Catharines, Ontario. She sends me a picture of that development every single week. Yeah, that's awesome. But why <laughs> nice. though? Yeah. Because it's not a mutual fund, it's not a passive way of making money. She actually sees what's going yeah. on with that investment. So, that's exciting too, I mean you get to see of course. your So your what better way of investing than something that they can actually see yeah. that they're invested in. It's not a paper investment. It's actually a tangible ways. Her feet are on the ground. Yeah. Right? So we always say boots on the ground. So what we always do is this. We always take the person who's investing and look at where their money should be. Mm -hmm. I've had people come to me with three hundred fifty thousand dollars, but they would I would only invest say fifty thousand. Yeah. Why? Because it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense for them. Because if they need the money in a certain amount of time, we won't take the total amount. <clears throat> we will like look at where the money is needed. Yeah. Right? And look at that project. Because they actually pick the project. So I have so many times where people invest in say a four year project, but they need their money in two years. Mm -hmm. It's not right for them. Exactly. It doesn't fit their investment. So that's huge. That's Get, yeah. Getting those pictures too. I got one the other day from Fortress. I'm invested in Collier's and Barry. Very good. Very good investment. And I, uh, I'm very, getting a picture. When I was there in the summertime, there was, well, there wasn't a lot going on. And now there's like structures going up. It's, uh, it was very cool to see. See, and see, and the best thing is, is like, look, he's actually invested in there. Yep. When you go on FortressRealCapital.com, you see not only the project you, you've invested in, but other projects. And that's, that's amazing because your friend could be invested in another project. He's invested in Collier's. Collier uh, actually sold out within two and a half weeks. Yeah. And people were coming to us after saying, okay, I'm ready, ready to invest now. I said, yeah. sorry, I can't, it's already full. So our problem is making sure we have enough projects now. Mm -hmm. So You know, it's, uh, it's, it's funny. When, when I do in my investment seminars and we talk about uh, the Fortress product, I always find that it's limited thinking with some people out there that it, they have to be always be invested in Ottawa. In you know, whereas there's so many projects in the Toronto area, in Barrie, and Burlington, and uh, out west, and yep. there's so many different projects with with what you're doing that you don't really care about the location. You what you care about the builder, the track record, and the term. The bottom line is is that. What I always say is this, and, and, and to me, I'm a little biased probably, but what I say is if it's on paper, if, if it's in your brochure, yeah. if it's a Fortress investment, you already know that it's, it's already been through the due diligence, everything's already been gone through, mm -hmm. and that you know it's, a, it's, it's an amazing project for you to, yeah. to invest in. Bottom line. So as, like a, as a client <coughs> out there, if you're watching, like, uh, you, know, you don't need to be like a Donald Trump to be investing in real estate. It's nothing to be intimidated by, I mean, it's something that, you know, you come in and uh, someone like Paul or Bob, they, they walk you through everything, they explain everything, they make sure it's the right investment for you. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a whole process. They just don't take your money run. It's, it, they make sure they're, you know, they're doing their due diligence, they're knowing their client and uh, they're taking care of you. And I think that's, that's a huge uh, a thing for someone that's new to this coming into it you know they get intimidated intimidated about investing i've had times where i've had like a so. nurse who's been a nurse for say 25 years yeah. she has no idea about investments she doesn't know what a syndicate mortgage is yeah but you have to sit down with them and explain and mm -hmm. uh, and make sure they understand what they're invested in yeah bottom line is when we talk to our clients we want them to know exactly what the detail is of their investment and that's uh, like, it's so rewarding because when you, when you have someone and say, I don't even know what I signed, but when you sit down with them yeah. and, and they say, okay, I invested with my bank and I don't even know what I invested yeah. in. And now they're investing in a syndicate mortgage through Fortress is that they know what they're invested in, yeah. bottom line. So it's, it's, it's fulfilling from, from all aspects, from the client to us, through through to Fortress, so yeah. and I, and FDS does you know we we wear our white white gloves and we actually do the service and we make sure that the person doesn't have to call their institution they that all they have to do is provide a statement and we take care of the rest yeah so that's very important for us yeah. 
that's that's good to know. Um, you know, I mean, I <coughs> dealing with some clients that are afraid to meet me for some reason. And, uh, you <laughs> well, know, you are you are a pretty burly. I'm pretty guy. intimidating. Really I know, uh, especially with the little voice. Yeah, especially with uh, the little click in the voice there. <laughs> I, yeah, I scare a lot of people. Uh, you know, they're just for some reason just they're intimidated. They're afraid of money matters. So I mean, to be able to make them at ease and understand yeah. that I mean, it's a, there's a whole process to all things. Uh, of course, there's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, everyone's friendly and uh, you know, you know, the, the, it's funny. The testimonial that I use at our investment seminar is from a gentleman who is my most aggressive investor and he's a paramedic. So it just shows you, you don't have to be Donald Trump yeah. to make a lot of money in real estate. And this, ge this gentleman with us from probably the last four or five years, he has, I mean, I, I don't even know the number. It's it's lots and lots and lots of units yep. as a paramedic because we sat down and we showed him how to one, take the equity of the home, yep. then two, how to let those investments start paying for the paying for themselves. And he's, he's a millionaire today because of it. Do you find there's a lot of skepticism with some people because of what's going on, uh, like the Bernie Madoff side, pyramid scheme? Well, you know, you know what's funny is, is today, is today yeah. I saw in a, a poll, and I believe it was the Ottawa Sun, um, they came out and in an article it said don't be scared the, the Ottawa real estate market is is going ahead it's booming yeah and then they asked the poll who believes that they should be investing in real estate this time and I think it was something like 56 percent of people said no said no yeah. you know uh, in 2000 the average sale price uh, you look at in 2005 the average sale price when I got into real estate the average sale price was like 260,000 yeah it's now 360,000. So if you're waiting for that to burst, you're not getting into real estate. The no. best time to get into real estate is yesterday. Yeah. We actually look at all the markets. You look at Ottawa, you look at Toronto, you look at Winnipeg, you look at Calgary. Ottawa hasn't even started. I, that's, what, that's what I think. And yep. if you actually look at what we're actually bringing to the market, the places we're investing, like you look at Soba, which we actually did the investment for in 2011, amazing projects, right? And that's what people want. I don't want to say anything bad, but um, developments in Ottawa aren't too. <laughs> Were they boring? <laughs> <laughs> well, right? listen, but, you're, you're right. You're right. But you know what? You have to be careful. There's, there's. Ottawa's not the same type of market as Toronto oh, of is. Of course. Because we talked about, one, all the immigrants coming to, 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 of to Toronto. Of course. Uh, and we know where the high-rises in Toronto, like the, the condos, are much less expensive than the low-rises, the, the, the single-family homes and that. Yeah. So a lot of the Im immigrants are going right into those big condos. Ottawa's very different. Ottawa, you don't have as many, you don't have as many people going into the condo market as you do into the single family home, a little more conservative. Um, and we really haven't touched the surface of condos here in of Ottawa. Course, no. And you know, last, story, last, yeah. last month we had 1,700 condos on the market. That's a lot of condos on the market trying to sell. I, mean, I so, think Ottawa too is a smaller city, like Toronto, you don't really need to be living downtown or to oh, access downtown quickly, so. Oh, um, of course. But we're talking about two different animals. Yeah, yeah. Two different animals. No, no yeah, and, and plus we're actually talking about a developer like Brad Lamb who's bringing like uh, chic, boutique type of yeah. condos. It's a different type of market where if you just want to have somebody who just builds up a condo, anyone can, can, can buy that. But when yeah. you're looking at like a Brad Lamb type of, of, of condominium project, it's a totally different yeah, piece. Absolutely. So, Perfect. Uh, so we'll be right back after a quick break and uh, give us a call. Thanks.